Thank you, Sarah. It's an honor to be here today. Um, moderating this panel is a natural extension of uh, the work that we did in London, culminating in the piece you just saw of Power of the Pitch. Um, but I know you're not here to listen to me speak. It's the three people that uh, are up on this stage with me. Um, and they have plenty to say on the topic of sport um, and how it can be a catalyst for economic development and social change in our region. And they need no introduction, but I'm going to give you one anyway. Uh, Bill DeWitt III, uh, president of the St. Louis Cardinals, Carolyn Kindle, CEO of St. Louis City SC, and Chris Zimmerman, president and CEO of the St. Louis Blues. Well, thank you all for being with us today, but Bill, we're going to start with you. So the Cardinals have a long, rich history. Um, they have fans across the country, fans across the world, and this summer they played in London. So why was that a big deal for your organization, for the Cardinals, and for everybody in this room? Why was it a big deal for our city and our region for them to play there? Well, I think you could see from the, uh, <clears throat> the presentation and the... Uh, from the discussion earlier about how we were able to leverage it in terms of being on the global stage. Uh, we sent a lot of folks over there to meet with um, international business types and politicians. And I think it just elevated uh, St. Louis. You know, when you think about the leagues, uh, we're all trying to expand internationally. Baseball's international footprint is a little different than the others. And so we're trying to take advantage of those areas where you have the baseball interest first and foremost. And certainly Western Europe is one of those. And I think um, when the folks in uh, London or elsewhere in Europe uh, think about uh, the Cardinals-Cubs rivalry, for example, and they think about it going you know, back 120 plus years, that's really unique to them. You know, I mean, their, their soccer clubs go way back too, but um, you know, the, the maturation of modern sport really occurred in the U.S. at the level that we see it now and in other parts of the world. And for people to understand that history and to dig into it a little bit was something that elevated both the Cardinals uh, and the Cubs and all of Major League Baseball. What did it mean for the players? Well, I think for the players, it was uh, about a fun and unique, different experience. The season is very long, 162 games. It can be a bit of a grind. So in the middle of the season to take a, a different trip like that. Um, and their, their spouses came along, we invited them along too, and they um, dragged them out to various events, which was great because um, their attendance might have been less uh, had their spouses not been there. And um, you know, we saw the players like walking uh, on the streets of London. I even saw a player in the tube and uh, going to various places. and. Um, I think first and more, for, foremost, it was just fun. Fun for us, fun for the players, and fun for our fans to do something different. Right, and fun, fun for us back in St. Louis, for sure. Uh, Chris, so rumor has it that um, there's a possibility that the World Junior Hockey Championships could be here in 2026. We're one of four cities being considered. Yeah, yeah, thanks um, <laughs> for mentioning that. Yeah, so we... Um, the world, first I'd probably explain what that <clears throat> event is. It's the best uh, players in the world 20 years and under. So essentially players that are just about to move into the NHL and be the future stars. Um, it's 10 countries. It's a long event. It's a 10-day event. Um, and we are one of four finalists with Seattle, Las Vegas, and Minneapolis. So as you, you think about those cities, that's some formidable competition. Mm -hmm. um, in Seattle, they have an amazing new um, redo of their old arena um, and lots of energy. They're on near the Canadian border. Min Minnesota has mm -hmm. that going as well. The Canadian fans are a key part. So we have our work cut out for us. We um, had a great site visit a couple weeks ago. Um, 
uh, I like to say, if, if we get this, it'll be the largest international sporting event held in St. Louis since the 1904 Olympics. So um, we, could, we would love to bring that here. So what, the, what, what are you doing? What is your organization doing? What, what's your work on the ground to try to get that to our city? Well, I'm going to actually, well, there's a few things, but you need to go back because um, when we redid our, reimagined our building, what did we, I guess we finished that in 19. Um, that was a real partnership between work with the city, with the county and state. Everyone was involved. And so the, the public-private partnership has gave us the opportunity to even be at the table. Um, you know, now, quite honestly, the energy that people bring to um, to the games, to the pitch happening down um, at City Park, to the Cardinals' history, the whole essence of, of sports in St. Louis and the way we respond to big events, the Winter Classic, um, all of those things have started to build more and more momentum. It's like any other business. Momentum builds momentum. and. Um, I think what's happening out at the racetrack, the work that Bell Reeves doing, all of these things are helping lift us up. When do you think we can get a, an answer on that? Um, actually, probably in the next 30 days. So the event oh. um, is, will be two years out. It starts on Boxing Day, December 26, and finishes up on January 5th, 2026. So it's only two years out. It's a huge for USA Hockey, um, it will be the sixth time it's been played in the U.S. out of 50 times. So um, uh, your help and support <laughs> and energy, I accept. So, Carolyn, when your family decided to invest in soccer and put we want to have soccer here. It was very intentional. It was very strategic to bring that particular sport here. Why? What about soccer was going to uh, push forward the legacy that your family wanted for this city? Well, you know, right here in the St. Louis region, I mean, St. Louis is a huge soccer town. And if you look at the talent um, going back to 1950, even through today, um, there has just been some incredible soccer players. Our academy systems are some of the best across the United States. But I think the allure was it's a very international sport. And when you're trying to recruit people, whether it's for our businesses, new business, retain the students, the talent that's here, you think about if they are international, they're familiar with the sport of soccer. And so we wanted to bring something that was familiar to them. But I think we also, as a sport, as the sport, Old, we learned more. It has a different demographic than both of these sports. Um, so complementary, of course. Um, but it, it, I think we just were really excited about the potential of where it would land St. Louis from a soccer point of view back on the international map, and that was really one of the goals the whole time. But I just, yeah. it also, soccer is skewing younger. So the demographic and the interest as we try to recruit employees and people into our city, it's, it's, it really matches up well and is a huge asset on that sense as well. At the beginning of the program, it mentioned that this is the first time the three of you have been on a stage like this together. Is that accurate? Doesn't seem so. I feel like there should be a club. <laughs> I don't you know. Guys, you guys well, get together. Well, if you include Zoom calls during COVID, I think we're hitting the yeah. high double digits. <laughs> yeah. Does that count? Okay. Well, you all are local ownership groups, right? And I think we have been, um, we know what it feels like here in St. Louis to not have an ownership group that is invested or cares about our region and our community. Um, but we're not going to focus on that today. Um, how important is the collaboration between you all? Um, and what impact does that have? Um, on fans and that unity that we're talking about that sports can bring to a region? I'll jump in on that. Um, well, of course, for many years, um, we've worked with the Blues very closely on um, 
various projects and collaborations, and now uh, obviously with City SC, we're we're adding them to it. Um, but my counterparts, a few of them have asked me, you know, what is this we guys have with the blues? Like, what you know, we uh, in whatever city, um, we're like neck, you know, we're at each other's throats to you know bend the uh, or to to go after the um, the sports dollar or whatever. And I, we just don't look at like it that. We don't think about it that way in St. Louis. Um, from the Winter Classic, which was a lot of collaboration, to um, sharing marketing assets when our season winds down. We just had a blues night, for example, to promote the upcoming blues season. Uh, they do the same for us when we're about to start and they're finishing up. And um, some friendships at the ownership group level. Um, I happen to skate with the Blues alumni a couple times a week. That's another <laughs> side. I'm just uh, also a hockey fan. Oh, tell us more about that. So um, uh, we're just fans of each other's sports. They're complimentary. We're both on uh, the same uh, local sports channel. Um, with soccer in town, I think it's bumped up the level of collaboration to, I think, a more, I would say, um, organizational, uh, mission-driven, you know, how do we all come together for the city? And so we're on various panels together for things like downtown security and um, um, uh, we, we often uh, touch base on what are you doing? Did you get asked to do this? Yeah. Are you doing it? No. Okay. I'm not doing it either. Did you get asked to World, a World Trade Center event? Yeah. Well, that one we all said yes, obviously. Yes. Uh, so we are really proud of that relationship, and um, we think it's somewhat unique a little bit around, uh, around sport. You can give a specific anecdote about your, you, two, you two specifically coming together when the Rams left that, you know, kind of gave a big hug to the rest of us here in St. Louis. Yeah, I mean, you want to touch sure. on Sure. Well, it, so when the, I, I arrived in St. Louis in 2014, I think that was January of 2015, um, when the Rams um, announced, I think that's right, um, and it, it really happened that day. There wasn't a grand plan that um, at that time we called, we called Bill and said, you know, would you, would you come over and join our chairman, Tom Stillman, at Center Ice? and drop the puck before the game. And they, um, Bill came out in his blues warm-up jacket. Tom Stillman, our chairman, came out in his Cardinals jacket. And it was actually, to me, even talking about it, it, it was a really emotional moment because like the, the, our fans, <laughs> it was like their, maybe it was their last moment of football high, but, or whatever you wanna call it, um, you know, the whole Kroenke sucks, Kroenke sucks, uh, um, <laughs> and, and, and so it, I just think it was representative. You, you had asked, what does it mean to our fans? It means a lot to our fans. They love seeing us working together and partnering. Yeah, and you all have, whether you like it or not, you know, you, you do unify everybody and it that comes with a lot of great responsibility. Um, and you have that power to um, affect change um, and heal, um, that being an example. Um, where does that fall on, on your list of priorities? I know that winning trophies is in championships and games, it's, that's up there, that's the top. But where does um, taking care of our community and being somebody, a, a major player in, in advancing our communities and our region? Or does that fall on your, your list of priorities? Sure. I mean, I think, you know, I want to speak for myself and certainly for these two gentlemen as well. I think you have to have a strong regardless. So while we use the power of sport and soccer, it really has been more than that. It's about bringing out the micro communities we have in this region, It's about showcasing the food scene, um, the music scene, and really just all the amazing things that St. Louis has to offer. But I would also say that one of the important things that all three of our teams work together is kind of going back, how do we continue to make it a safe place to come down and visit? Do you feel comfortable coming with your family? Um, you can walk from Ballpark Village down to um, City Park, 
But I think some of the stats I've heard just throughout the year is that if we have more activities going on, it actually brings more people downtown and the safety is actually much higher because of that density and having that presence. And I think that that's a great story that I'm happy the three of us can contribute to because obviously you have other things, the beautiful aquarium. Um, but at the end of the day, if you don't have a healthy city and a thriving downtown, these, you're not going to be as successful. But since right now it's all about potential, going back to you know international, whether it's recruitment of players, coaches, fans, but also outside the region, you've got to have that place where they feel safe and welcome. I'll give you a funny story. You mentioned the food scene. So my brother owns Dewey's Pizza, which has a number of restaurants in town. Okay. And uh, hey, good <laughs> plug for Dewey. So um, they open their park, and he puts a, um, a small little kiosk at the stadium at Dewey's Pizza. And I'm like, Andrew, did you not consider Bush Stadium for this first? <laughs> He's like, what? Um, and he, Did you ask it? Well, no, he kind of had a good comeback because, I mean, I actually said Ballpark Village because Sports Service has exclusive in Bush Stadium, so they can kind of do what they want. But, um, but it actually changed the way we think about it because we ended up carving out a couple spots for local brands like they did as a primary theme with their food and beverage. So just a funny story about how um, we also try to push each other a little bit, innovation. They had a blank slate and did a whole new stadium just recently. You know, ours is open in 06, and, you know, we got to keep thinking about how you um, innovate, and, and we're sort of doing that Ballpark Village primarily, but um, just a funny story about how these, um, these collaborations can, can occur. Well, and, and when COVID happened and both of their venues went to ticket lists and cash lists, we have once again benefited from learning a lot because both of you had, that's a hard thing when you take people, I mean, my mom still has to have her paper <laughs> tickets. I know you're laughing at calls probably in your oh, voicemail right God. now. But, you know, it was great to be able to call their teams and say, hey, what did you learn from this? You know, because you're literally transforming generations of I no longer can hand you my cash. And so I think there again, every time that we have called, we have gotten a lot of help. Now, I don't want to get ahead of myself here, but somebody did have to plan a Stanley Cup party a couple years back. And being overly prepared that I am, um, and certainly World Series parties as well, um, you know, we're looking forward to making that phone call because we know we're going to get honest feedback, advice, and it's always going to end with what can we do to help. And we sincerely appreciate that. Yeah, well. <laughs> so regional leaders here in St. Louis, we want to attract more businesses, have a strong workforce, create economic development. We want inclusive communities, right? And while sports unites people, and you have a lot of power um, to help that, that's it, it's not all, that's not going to happen what else is needed? What else is working? You guys have been doing this a while. What have you seen working? And what are some challenges um, that aren't negative, but don't necessarily promote the progress? I can jump in. I think for us, um, we have such an established fan base that um, sometimes you um, have to think about it a little bit differently, how you might shake it up, morph it, change it a little bit, keep it younger. So we do a lot of thinking about that um, in terms of technology and other aspects. From an inclusivity standpoint, um, you know, things like um, having a DEI coordinator, um, having um, your marketing message, reach out to different groups within the, um, the community so that maybe they have a special day. We have theme nights. So for example, the um, Bosnian community had a theme night a few years ago. Uh, we did African American Heritage Night. Um, we've done that several years running. And uh, Christian Family Day. So things that um, sometimes it takes a little push for a group to say, all right, let's all rally and go to a ball game or, or any other event. And so we're trying to tap into that communal effort within the sub-communities in our, in our region. And really, if you do that um, successfully, then they'll say, all right, well, maybe I'll just go to a regular game on any other day. So that's one of the things. And there are several others, obviously, having Cardinals Care be out in the community and its mission of, of 
kids in the uh, community with uh, youth baseball and cultural arts experiences is, is, is part of that too. I think, I think we all recognize that a strong city, a strong region is ultimately the goal for all of us. And so we, we are, we're in our little space. We, we try to be as good at that as we can. We each find different zones to engage beyond places that I think people might expect to see us. And um, yeah, I mean, ultimately, um, it's about creating something that, that's, yes, championship will in itself bring tons of the energy, but those don't happen every year. And so we're in business every other year as well, and we're part of the community. And I think we, we think of it as a, a responsibility. I mean, these are, you know, these are public assets. Um, the Cardinals being the beacon, uh, you know, I got, this is one of the great iconic brands in sport. And so we, we learn from each other as well, which is, which I think for each of us is, is a tremendous asset. I think um, especially one of the things that my team has been really working hard on is really segmenting different communities and doing a deep dive to see how you can be the best community partner. And there's been some really interesting um, findings, but in a world that moves so fast, so whether it's how you consume sports in general, are you streaming it, are you watching it on your phone, to how you spend money, are you know, uh, there's a whole generation that's probably not even going to know what change is if you really think about it. And so that's been interesting, but it's also been a little bit of a struggle because how do you take what would make a certain person from a certain community feel comfortable and try to apply it to an entire stadium? And so we're trying to really work with um, LBGTQIA+, women, college kids. I, I could go down the list of what, do you, what would you like to see from us that would make you feel safer or happier or, or whatever adjective you want to insert there. <clears throat> But it is, it is a moving target, because everything else moves so much faster right now. But we're really excited, hopefully, you know, in the next year or two, we'll, really, we'll have enhancements that may not be a, just a, bit, a broad brush, but certainly will be attractive, or other communities will appreciate them. What about, St. Louis does have, you know, we, sports is a great asset that we have, but we have other things that are great, too. Have, do you ever see stepping out of your comfort zone and um, I know um, City SC has done some of this, and com combining with the arts, we have a great arts scene here, and making, what's the combination, or what does that look like possibly with sports and the arts moving forward? Yeah, I think, I think a lot of it's just gonna come from what does the community want? And the more you're out, it doesn't matter what sport you are, but the more you're out in the community, the more you hear about um, opportunities and partnering with the right partners. So whether it's Urban League, Hispanic Chamber, we have so many wonderful, community agencies that we could partner with. And I think that some of the best ideas just sort of evolve over time in listening to what the community wants and figuring out what role you play in it. So I think the honest answer is, of course, we would be open to anything. Um, but I think it really, I, I personally believe it needs to come more from a community and not, more f and not so much from the team. Um, Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park, um, their leg the Olympic legacy plan, um, they gave themselves 20 years, not from when they knew the Olympics was coming, but from the, when the Olympics had left London, um, for their plan, their legacy to be fully seen, right? So they still have another nine years um, to, to see what that looks like. Um, in, your, in your lens of community, what would you like to see the work that your organizations do? Um, and in 20 years, what would that impact from now be using that community lens? You know, I think that um, when you think about the big projects, many of them that have been talked about today, um, I, I sort of come back to that idea. We, because we have, we have big tasks ahead, and I guess I just feel like, we, you know, we have to keep knocking them down. and. and um, but as I look over the nine years that I've lived here and see, you know, whether it's NGA, whether it's some of the airport initiatives, you know, things that can be transformative, 
they're happening. Um, we, one of the things we have to wave to everybody and get through all the other noise, and there's a lot of noise. So um, I don't think there, it's, it's hard to say this is what will be, but obviously you know, energizing our region, you, having a region that's more inclusive, all of those things we're hoping that sport can play a role in making a difference. Yeah, I would add to that that I think we all believe that a strong downtown is, is absolutely critical. Obviously, all three of us are downtown um, in our facilities. We continue to invest in Ballpark Village, uh, hope to expand into a third phase at some point. Um, you guys are doing development around the park. Uh, the Blues have contributed. You've got Union Station right there. Um, and, and so I really feel like that is an area of um, to answer your question of where, where can we be in 10 years, if we can make progress in that area and continue to move the needle on, on key downtown initiatives, both developmental and um, in, in terms of just you know, safety, security, uh, development, uh, job creation, um, recruitment. Um, you know, we had um, a certain, I, I think it was about 20 plus thousand commuters, I'm sure others in this room would know that, pre-COVID, coming to downtown. COVID brought it to like nothing almost. And I don't think we're still quite back to the number we were. And that, that's a challenge for, um, and those are because of various trends that we all know about, work at home, et cetera. But getting us back to that, to where it's a healthy ecosystem for retail and other things is, is really important. And I'm hoping, kind of the way I look at it, the lens of 10 years, hoping that we all contribute, but that everybody realizes that, that a strong downtown is absolutely critical to what we do, to the overall region, and, and where we need to go. You want to get the last word in? Well, they went very unselfish. I'm going to go very selfish. I want the next best international soccer player to have started in our City Futures program. Right. Simple. And that leaves us with well, 30 seconds left. <laughs> Do what? 30 seconds left. We'll end it there. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with us. And go City tonight. Great season coming up with, with the Blues. And congratulations to Wainwright last night. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.